So now we're looking at Home Depot here. So uh, before we take a look at the option chain for a potential trade here, Harold, let's talk about the outlook for Home Depot stock and analyze this Market Smith chart here for us. Yeah, so if you go to the weekly chart, and this is what uh, attracted me for a potential short idea. You see, Home Depot, it just, well, first off, well, no, let me finish my thought here. So you got the 40 week moving average. That's that black line on the chart and it has tested it and it could, it just can't make its way above that. And then you have that gap over on the left side there. That's back in uh, February of this year. That's also serving as an additional area of resistance for the stock. And then you also look at the RS line. You know, we've been talking about that relative strength. It is show, clearly showing some weakness as far as relative strength. So that's my reasoning by, behind doing a bearish uh, trade on the stock. So I'm gonna be doing a bear call spread on Home Depot. Awesome. So now I'll have you take over the screen share and show us the option chain for Home Depot. And you can talk to us about the expiration that you wanna go with here. Okay, so you see in my chart there or the yes. Okay, got okay. So I'm gonna start. I'm gonna I'm gonna go out to the 58 days out. So I want to give myself some time. You know, we're in the summer. We're you know at the summer doldrums where trading tends to slow down. So I'm gonna give myself some time. So I'm gonna go out 50 days. Uh, 58 days out. That's the August 18 expiration. So let me click on that. And then what I'm going to do here is I'm going to sell the 315, sell the 315 call, and then I'm going to buy the 320 for protection. Oops, let me start over again. So again, sell the, the 315 and then holding my shift key or my control key down and then buying the 320 for protection here. And so you see here, John, you see the trade setup here. Selling the 315, buying the 320. And wow, my credit has improved here. So uh, based on my numbers, I'm going to lower that down. But I do like the fact we are getting more credit. So based on the numbers I had, I was looking at $1.55 as far as the credit. So let's take a look at the numbers here. So I'm going to click on confirm and send. And the first thing I like to look at is the, the break even. So this is a bearish trade. We want this stock to go down. But it can go up to 315, 316 before we get to the break even. You know, right now it's trading at about uh, 301. So we got a lot of room to the upside as far as uh, our break even there. And then our profit is always going to be the credit received. That's $155. Okay, so like I like the numbers I see here. Uh, how many contracts do I want to buy with this stock here? So let's go take a look at the numbers here. We're going to crunch some numbers. We're going to look at the probability of success. We're going to look at our return on our risk and let's see what we've got here. So I've got some notes here on the left side here. So to calculate the probability of success, what we do is we take the width of the spread. That's the difference between the strikes. So here's the strikes. The width of the spread is $5. Subtract the credit received of $1.55, and that's going to give us a risk of, of about $3.45 or an option terms. $345. We always multiply by 100 when you're talking about options. So that $345, that's our actual risk. Now, to determine the, the uh, probability of success, what we do is we take our actual risk divided by the, uh, the width of the spread, which we know is $5, multiply by 100. That gives us probability of success of 69%, which is a pretty good number. I like to be in the you know 60s, low 70s as far as my probability of success. Probability of success is defined as this trade making at least one penny or more. So doesn't mean it's gonna be some explosive winner. We hope so, but not necessarily. All right, then our return, our risk, you know, we're risking again, $345. To calculate that, we just take the credit received at $1.55, divide that by the, uh, the, the uh, actual risk multiplied by 100, that's 44% or 45%, you round up. Not bad return over a 58 day period if this trade works out like we expected. Now, based on that, how many contracts we're gonna buy? So we determine based on our portfolio size, our level of risk, 
we're going to put $2,500 into this trade. So we take our $2,500 divided by our, our, um, our actual risk. That's going to give us 7.25 or seven contracts. So I'm going to change my uh, totals here to seven. And then I'm going to click on confirm and send. And you can see the, the buying power. So again, uh, it's not going to always uh, equal the, it's close to that 2,500. So it's pretty close as far as how much money this is going to require. And then our max profit. And I like the numbers here. So I'm going to click on confirm and send. And uh, I should get filled because prior to, uh, uh, well, I'm just going to click on confirm and send and see what happens here. And that's the trade. Great. Thanks so much, Harold. I'm going to go back to MarketSmith and show roughly on the chart where that break-even area is around 316. So seems like uh, you got plenty of room for this stock to work. Right, right. So Home Depot, okay, it's up a little bit today, but uh, we'll wait and see. I think that uh, you can see it's gotten up above that 40-week several times in the past week, uh, week and a half but it just can't hold it there. So hoping for a further breakdown in this stock. Thanks so much for walking us through that, Harold. Anything else that we need to be aware of in terms of how this trade might play out and when to close the position? I know you like uh, looking once we're a certain number of days from expiration and making your decision. Right, so when I get out to 21 days to expiration, that's when I like to make a decision as to what I'm going to do with this stock. Uh, that's provided it has not hit my profit target. You know, I like to set a profit target of at least 50%. And the way you determine that is you take your credit and just divide it by two, and that's going to give you your profit target there. And that will be a 50% gain. That would be nice. But if we don't get to 50% by the time we get to 21 days out, then that's where I need to make a decision. Do I want to roll it? Rolling is a way of buying time for the stock. Do I just want to close it out? Maybe I just have a 30% profit. And then I'll just close it out, take the money and move on and look for something else.